Today we will provide a detailed explanation about one of the submarines considered to be the fastest, quietest, deepest diving, and most capable the U.S. Navy has ever built. It is also known as the most expensive hunter-killer submarine in the world. Can you guess which submarine it is? Yes, absolutely. It is the Seawolf Class SSN-21. Let's take a look at what makes this submarine one of the best in class. The Seawolf class is a type of nuclear-powered fast attack submarine, SSN, in service with the U.S. Navy. It was designed to be a faster, more powerful replacement for the Los Angeles-class nuclear-powered attack submarines. The design work started in 1983, with a fleet of 29 submarines was planned to be built over a 10-year period. However, that number was then reduced to 12. Moreover, due to the end of the Cold War and budget constraints, any further additions to the fleet were canceled in 1995, leaving the Seawolf class with only three boats, the USS Jimmy Carter, the USS Connecticut, and Seawolf itself. As a result, the smaller Virginia class was created. The Seawolf class costs approximately $3 billion per unit, $3.5 billion for the USS Jimmy Carter, making it the most indulgently expensive SSN submarine and the second most expensive submarine in history after the French SSBN Triumphant class. The Seawolf is not called a hunter-killer submarine for no reason. This sub's distinctive design and capabilities are what make it so special and different among the pack. In a deep ocean environment, the Seawolf was designed to counter the threat of advanced Soviet ballistic missile submarines such as the Typhoon class and attack submarines such as the Akula class. The Seawolf has a dive displacement of 9,137 tons, 12,139 tons for the Jimmy Carter, and a surface displacement of 8,060 tons. It employs 116 people, including 15 officers with a sub-ice capability and retractable bow planes. It was also intended to operate under the polar ice cap. On the other hand, to withstand water pressure at greater depths, Seawolf class hulls are made of HY-100 steel, which is stronger than HY-80 steel used in previous classes. This makes the Seawolf the first of attack submarines to use this new welding material and can dive to the depth of 610 meters. The hull of the boat itself has a length of up to 100 feet or 30.5 meters, such as on the USS Jimmy Carter, which was commissioned in December 2001. It also incorporates a dry deck shelter. The dry deck hangar is an air transportable device that can carry swimmer delivery vehicles and combat swimmers in a piggyback configuration. A combat swimmer silo, an internal lockout chamber that can hold up to eight swimmers and their equipment, is also available. Given that the Seawolf has a distinguishing design, it is noteworthy that the most significant advantage of the Seawolf class design lies in its exceptional quietness even at high tactical speeds. While most submarines must maintain their speed as low as 5 knots to avoid detection by passive sonar arrays, the Seawolf class is said to be able to cruise at 20 knots and still be impossible to locate. This is mainly because the acoustic cladding is completely installed. The U.S. Navy describes the Seawolf as 10 times quieter than the improved Los Angeles and 70 times quieter than the original Los Angeles boat. However, normally it can dive at a maximum speed of 35 knots. The Seawolf, like the improved Los Angeles class, has no external weapons. All three boats in the Seawolf class are outfitted with Raytheon's Tomahawk cruise missiles. These cruise missiles have a range of 1,700 kilometers and are used to attack ships and land targets. The boats are also fitted with eight 660 millimeter torpedo tubes with a warhead weighing 267 kilograms. It can operate with or without wire guidance and employs both active and passive homing techniques with the range of 50 kilometers and 38 kilometers respectively. There are 50 units of these torpedo tubes on the Seawolf which are located in a double-deck torpedo room and enable the sub to deal with multiple targets at once. Besides that, the Seawolf class carries the Harpoon anti-ship missile from Boeing. A 225-kilogram warhead is delivered by Sub Harpoon using active radar homing. With high subsonic speed, it can reach a range of 130 kilometers. In brief, 
The weaponry on the Seawolf includes a UGM-109 Tomahawk T-LAM, MK-48 ADCAP torpedoes, and UGM-84 Harpoon SSM. Additionally, instead of torpedoes and missiles, there are up to 100 marine mines carried by this sub. Another exclusive feature of the Seawolf class is the boat's cutting-edge electronic system. The sub utilizes an improved ANBSY-2 combat system with an active or passive sonar array and a wide aperture passive flank array, as well as a TB-16 and a TB-29 surveillance and tactical towed arrays. Nevertheless, there is also the BPS-16 navigation radar and the Raytheon MK-2 weapon control system mounted, which are standard on the class. There is also the Northrop Grunham WLY-1 advanced torpedo decoy system as part of the countermeasure suite. Under the Acoustic Rapid Commercial Off-the-Shelf Insertion ARCI program, the Seawolf submarines are outfitted with the Lockheed Martin ANBQQ-10 V4 sonar processing system. Thus, for navigation, a BPS-16 radar operating in the I-band is installed. In terms of the propulsion, the Seawolf is powered by a GE Power S6W reactor system. Two turbines rated at 52,000 horsepower or 38.8 megawatts, a pump jet propulsor, a single shaft, and a secondary propulsion submerged motor. With such powerful capabilities, the boats are extremely maneuverable and additional space has been built into the class for future weapon development. Despite their powerful weapons load, ultra quietness, and robust electronics fit, the Seawolf class has yet to see combat. It is anticipated that in the future, the vessels will be equipped for the transport, deployment, and recovery of uninhabited underwater vehicles. So, do you believe the Seawolf can be fully obsolete due to its less expensive alternative, a Virginia-class submarine that is already in service? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. That's all for today, and see you next time.